Okay, welcome to the next part of the video. This is another Orbiter 2010 video. In the last video, I started setting up a, a new mission. I'm going to be going from Earth to Mercury. And I'm going to be basically recording uh, everything so that you can see the whole thought process. You can see all the mistakes I make. You can see all the material that I reference and everything. So for some people, this might be uh, too tedious. You might not be at all interested in watching this. That's fine, I understand. I'll put a note, an annotation, or a link or something, or maybe something down in the description uh, so you can just skip to the part of the series where we actually get to launch and take off, and then you can just watch the flight. But I know for some people, they find the whole setup process uh, possibly, in some cases, even more interesting than the flight itself. Because when you get, once you get beyond just going to uh, the ISS and going to the moon, then the orbiter becomes. 90% planning and 10% execution. The execution is simple. It's all the, the planning is what makes uh, the was what makes a lot of the flights more difficult. Uh, therefore, when you just see a video of somebody uh, executing a flight to Venus, it's kind of like, eh, yeah, well, that that doesn't tell me how to do it. I don't know. I don't understand anything. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and record all this extra stuff that I normally wouldn't record. Having said that, let's jump back in. In the uh, last video, again, we started the setup process, and I ran out of time while trying to find uh, a, tr a, a good transex plan that I was happy with. So I'm going to just pick up here right where we left off before. So I was kind of playing around with the prograde there, and let me just continue that. So that's not helping. And I'm just looking for a, the, the best... the best approach here to go to uh, Mercury. Okay, so in that direction. Okay, this one's a little confusing. So you just kind of have to bear with me here. I mean, it's not real exciting to uh, to work with Transex. It's just a tedious process, and it does require a bit of concentration. So it's a little difficult to commentate as I go through the whole, you know, as I go through the thing here. I mean, it's fairly straightforward and obvious what I'm doing. So it's not a whole lot for me to talk about. Okay, I'm just kind of guessing here at this point, put in some positive plane change. And do some outward. That's not really doing anything. Not prograde. So if we go prograde and plane change, maybe. It's sort of helping. Take out some of that outward now. Okay, let's overshoot in that direction. No, let's overshoot the other direction. Yeah, let's go that way, and let's try prograde. Okay, so if we go lower on the prograde and more on the plane change. Okay. Now what about outward? How much velocity overall are we using? 14.23k. Let 
how does that compare to Okay, so let's add in some extra outward. I'll take away plane change and see if we get a lower overall number. Eh, not really. Outward. Okay. Okay, let's add in, add in some outward. In other words, take out some of the stuff that we added in negatively. That seems like it might be helping. So if we go lower on the prograde, and then come back to outward and add in some outward. Ugh, it's still not exactly getting us what we need though. But it looks like we might be driving down our delta V cost, so we're, I think I'm going in the right direction with the date. Um, I'll know for sure when I get in a little closer. What was the number before? I don't remember. It was 10 point something. It was close to 11 kilometers, I believe. So I'm going in the right direction, I think, with the date. All right, so let me, before I... Uh, before I dial that in more, let's go back one more day because this was, I believe this is at least 250 uh, meters per second lower. So instead of 53862, let's try 53861 as the date. Like that. Now, reset the plane change. And we reset the outward for now. Okay, set the prograde to its lowest point, which is somewhere around here. Okay, something like that. Now we just have to work with outward and plane change. Okay, let's overshoot the outward in this direction. Okay, so 518 was its lowest. Let's overshoot. Okay, that's getting it lower. So for starters, I can just use outward and prograde. So let's overshoot in that direction. Okay, I saw it, so we're close here. Uh, PE velocity is much higher. Hmm. See here, it's 12.52. I mean, that's two kilometers per second higher just by one day of difference, so definitely this is not the right time to go so let's move the date forward a bit and 
let me try that number just a bit a little bit later in the day <clears throat> Reset outward. And I'll get the uh, closest approach in as low as I can just with prograde. Looks like it's around here. Now just outward again. It's amazing how just a few hours can make such a huge difference in these inner planets. Okay, so outward isn't really doing anything for us at this point. Let's start let's switch to plane change then for now. Okay, that's bringing it way down. Okay, so let's overshoot. Go back to prograde. And we'll overshoot the other direction. Back to plane change. And once again, without going any farther, I can see the p-velocity is still higher than what it was prior. Here we're at 11.27, so we're bringing it, bringing down the uh, p-velocity by going farther ahead in time. So let's go farther ahead yet. 53861. Let's try 53863 again. I, I could have swore that was lower or higher than the other number, but maybe I'm wrong. Okay, so 53863, three, and then we'll just some change, basically. Of course, that makes a lot of difference on these inner planets, but... Okay, so outwards already reset. Let's reset plane change. And let's go to the prograde and get it set. Looks like, where, which way are we, do we need to go here? Okay, so somewhere in this area. Now, let's start with plane change again. I'm gonna reset plane change because I'm confused. Let's do outward. plane change okay prograde Outward. Plane change. Okay, let's overshoot plane change this way. And go to prograde. Okay, that's getting us reasonably close. Oh my gosh. Now we're at 12.18 again. Hmm. Okay, so... 53862 does seem to be the best day. We're just not... It's just not a good year, perhaps. Maybe next year would be better. Or seven years from now would be better. All right, let me just do this one more time. Let's adjust the date backwards to 53862. Just make it an even number like that, 25. Well, even would be, well, whatever. What I was shooting for was 2,500. 
just to have a round number of some kind right there. Well, whatever, it's close. Okay, reset outward again. Reset plane change again. Adjust prograde again. Space travel is exciting, isn't it? <laughs> okay, we've got to the low point here with prograde. Okay, outward is a mess, so let's not use it yet. Plane change. Okay, so that we overshot a little bit that way. Let's go back to prograde. Okay, we're overshooting that way a bit. Back to plane change. Overshoot that way a bit. Back to prograde. And that has us pretty low. Man. Hmm. But look at that PE velocity. So just by dumb luck, the very first uh, configuration I came up with appears to be the best. That's, that's strange. So let's try 3500 on the date. I'm just real curious how much difference the date's going to make. At this point, it's not really date. It's more like hours. Okay, let's... that... Okay, so we'll overshoot that way a little bit, then go to prograde. Then we'll bring it back in this way. Yeah, P velocity 12 kilometers per second, that's too much. We can beat that for sure. Hmm. <laughs> What exact date was I using here? 51309. So some date in the distant past. Actually, I think I'm looking at the wrong thing here. I want to look at this. 53862. Did I ever come up with one here? No, I didn't. So I'm going to actually say that this, this year is wrong. If, if That's if we want to get a low PE velocity. This, this is just a bad year. Whatever, you know, 53863. So let me use one of the dates that I already found in the past when I went through this and spent all those hours working on it. So we'll go date, and let's use a 51309. Point three three seven nine. Okay, I've I've done this one before. I've used this date uh, before. Well, I haven't flown the flight before, but I've used this date before. This is one of the dates I found in the past. So let's uh, try it and see what we come up with on the p velocity. All right, so uh, let's just let's uh, yeah let's reset the variables. So reset plane change. And let's make sure we get the date set here, or else we'll be way too screwed up. It's 51309.3379. Okay. Okay, so for starters, we'll go with something around here that gets the orbit down to the orbit of Mercury. Now let's go with the other variables and see what we can find out. Okay. 
bringing the okay plane change let's reset plane change for now and just work with prograde and outward So we'll overshoot this way a bit. Now back to prograde. Overshoot that way a bit. Outward. And we're there. But this says 11.5. All right, first of all, let me fine tune this. Actually, here's what I can do. Let me let me put in let me input the exact data that I came up with before, which was a prograde of negative ninety one oh two. So enter negative ninety one oh two. And then I had an zero outward in twenty two sixty six of plane change. Okay, so zero outward, we can just reset it. And 2266. Yeah, see, look at that PE velocity, 8.77. And this is this is what I figured out back in March or something. April, May, whatever it was, I don't remember. So you can see clearly, just by having the right date. And the right set of variables you have a there's a huge difference in in your in your pe velocity and this is important this is this is probably one of the most important numbers in this flight because this is how much fuel you're going to have to burn when you get to mercury in order to slow down well it's not this exact number because because obviously you're going to get in orbit around mercury and in the orbital velocity around mercury is like 2200 meters a second something like that Actually, I can tell you exactly what it is because I've got it in my spreadsheet. It's uh, close to 3,000 meters a second. So you can take this number minus uh, 3,000 3, meters per second, and that's how much fuel you need to get into a parking orbit. So clearly 8.77 or, you know, a little over 8.5 kilometers is way better than, you know, what we were seeing, you know, 11.5 and 12 kilometers and 10.5. So... Uh, it's just a matter of sitting there with Transax and just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth through the variables and trying different dates. And it's really tedious. And like I said, I'm, I'm not even joking when I say I spent probably 10 hours back in the, earlier this year to find these different dates. And I, I found these, which I call my good solutions. I don't know if that shows up in the video playback, but you can see down here, I've got that tab for good solutions. And then I have this tab for uh, bad solutions. And the bad solutions have a, um, you know, sometimes the, uh, here are the bad solutions. You can see sometimes the PE velocity, you know, was, uh, was as high as, you know, 23 kilometers per second. That's just absolutely ridiculous. That's why I've got this one highlighted in red, just to show how bad it is. But all of these PE velocities are very high, you know, 14 kilometers per second, almost 12 uh, 15 and a half, uh, so over 17 and a half, 14, and so on down the list. So these are all bad solutions. If you arrive at Mercury with a PE velocity that's this high, you know, it's just going to cost you a ton of extra fuel that's totally unnecessary. Uh, you can see here, you know, we can save, you know, tremendously just by having the right date and the right set of variables here. Okay, so um, I, was, I was hoping to be able to find... A, a new date just here live but it's it would take too long so I'm gonna I'm going to go ahead and plan on using this this date here this configuration so in part one we got the uh, you know the H the HCLV set up with the XR2 and we started figuring out transex and in, in, in the second part here I've continued working with transex and you know, at least you got to see what was going on. You got you get to understand some of the problems that you have to overcome. 
So I'm going to go ahead and leave this part here, even though it's only 24 minutes. But I don't want to move on to uh, any new information here until I start a new video. So uh, quick save. And when I come back, we'll start figuring out exactly uh, what kind of fuel cost we're going to have and how we're going to get this thing, how we're going to get this thing out to uh, out to Mercury, or if we even can. I'm not even 100% sure. You can take the XR2 to Mercury. Maybe if we eliminate some of the crew and uh, do some other changes. I don't know. We'll figure that part. We'll figure that out in the next part. Uh, if you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, check out the Facebook page. See you in the next part. And do some outward. That's not really doing anything. Not prograde. So if we go prograde and plane change, maybe. It's sort of helping. Take out some of that outward now. That direction. Okay, this one's a little confusing. So you just kind of have to bear with me here. I mean, it's not real exciting to uh, to work with TransX. It's just a tedious process, and it does require a bit of concentration. So it's a little difficult to commentate as I go through the whole, you know, as I go through the thing here. I mean, it's fairly straightforward and obvious what I'm doing. So it's not a whole lot for me to talk about. Okay, I'm just kind of guessing here at this point, put in some positive plane change. Percent execution. The execution is simple. It's all the, the planning is what makes uh, the, was what makes a lot of the flights more difficult. Uh, therefore, when you just see a video of somebody uh, executing a flight to Venus, it's kind of like, eh, yeah, well, that, that doesn't tell me how to do it. I don't know, I don't understand anything. So that's why I'm gonna go ahead and record all this extra stuff that I normally wouldn't record. Having said that, let's jump back in. In the uh, last video, again, we started the setup process and I ran out of time while trying to find uh, a, tr a good Transex plan that I was happy with. So I'm gonna just pick up here right where we left off before. So I was kind of playing around with the prograde there and let me just continue that. So that's not helping. And I'm just looking for a, the, the best the best approach here to go to uh, Mercury. Okay, so in that. Okay, let's overshoot in that direction. No, let's overshoot the other direction. Yeah, let's go that way and let's try prograde. Okay, so if we go lower on the prograde and more on the plane change. Okay. Now what about outward? Okay, how much velocity overall are we using? 14.23k. How does that compare to... Okay, welcome to the next part of the video. This is another Orbiter 2010 video. In the last video, I started setting up 
a uh, new mission. I'm going to be going from Earth to Mercury. And I'm going to be basically recording uh, everything so that you can see the whole thought process. You can see all the mistakes I make. You can see all the material that I reference and everything. So for some people, this might be uh, too tedious. You might not be at all interested in watching this. That's fine. I understand. I'll put a note, an annotation or a link or something or maybe something down in the description uh, so you can just skip to the part of the series where we actually get to launch and take off and then you can just watch the flight. But I know for some people, they find the whole setup process uh, possibly in some cases even more interesting than the flight itself. Because when you get, once you get beyond just going to uh, the ISS and going to the moon, then Orbiter becomes 90% planning and 